Hello and welcome to Life is Feudal, Forest Village. We've done quite a lot of terraforming since the last episode. Uh, done that all off camera. And we're now at the point where we're actually ready to start uh, building our roads, building these, um, these buildings that I've put in place. Um, it's a lot different from the original plan that I was going with. There was going to be a quadrant down here for vegetables, one up here for cows, another one over here for cows, and then one down here for fruit. But while I was building these, um, you know, these structures over here, it kind of dawned on me. I think I think I, I didn't quite like the way the like the transport system was going to work. I think it was going to get a bit messy. A bit complicated. Um, I mean, I certainly didn't want people, you know, working up here and living up here to have to come all the way down here for, like, for vegetables, for instance. Um, I also need to be able to get products into the this food um, area and out. I mean, I need to get like clothes and tools from the village. I need to be able to take food to the village. So I was having a bit of a think about it. Um, I mean, I also need like services as well. So I came up with this idea of a sort of like a central storage area uh, as well as a service area um, to share between all four quadrants. So all this terraforming has been done up here. I mean, I lost quite a few people because of like this was all on, on ground. So we had to go through like a phase one. So we lost people uh, who had come over from village one to help because they chopped down trees, um, stone and so on. Then I lost a lot more people again because all this area, uh, there's a lot of trees grew, so I had to get, again, I had to get people to clear that out, so they came all the way over from village one, and quite a few of those people died of starvation. But we're now at the place where we're actually start, pretty much ready to actually start building everything. I'm, I'm just mindful though that it's summer. It's probably a bad time to start, because when you build these uh, places, anybody will come out to help, so I'll be getting a lot of people coming out from village one to help. But at least I can, I mean, I can control that. I don't want them doing that during the winter, and I, I can control that and put that on pause, but the, the actual roads, I can't. So chances are, unless I start deleting some of these roads, I'll lose some people, but I'd rather keep the, the structure as is for now that I've put it together so I don't forget it. So the strategy is to get this central storage area built. We'll have like a, a stable like this one, for instance, They'll be bringing the produce from this quadrant into the storage area and they'll also be bringing different produce into that quadrant. So they're going to basically target that barn there um, to take you know, meat and milk out and put it into the storage, uh, the central storage that we've got here. But they'll also target some of these barns as we come down here. They'll target those to bring other resources into that barn there. Then we'll have this barn here, we'll just share all of these resources between the three barns. Because the idea is, I, I mean, I'm going to have like these pastures here, probably going to be dumping their meat into this barn. I don't want this get this getting full and this one getting short, so I'm just going to get them to balance things out. Because we'll, we'll be getting quite a lot of meat taken out of this barn, so I want anything that's being put into this barn rippling through to here. And likewise, any you know, like any vegetables that get dumped into here, I want that rippling all the way through. So I'll balance it, balance it out. Fairly easy enough to do. Um, what I'll also do, I'll, I'll have to keep an eye on the number of roots though, because I'm seeing to be adding more and more, uh, and each stable is limited to a maximum of eight roots, so that could be a problem. But um, the idea is that I've got these strips of barns, and each one's dedicated to either one or two resources it just depends um, I mean this one here is dedicated to meat uh, these ones they're dedicated to eggs and milk now originally I was gonna build another you know cattle pasture up here but then I changed my mind I thought actually I'll do some chicken coops instead because up to now I've been locking off eggs uh, they definitely do help I, I do want to give the, the population a good balance um, so I want to see if four chicken coops is going to be enough for this area, for instance. I want to see just how many chicken coops do you actually need to be able to meet the demand of people. Because um, at the moment, I, as I say, I lock them off specifically so that I can make sure that the bakers have got enough to make vegetable pies. I mean, at the moment, I don't actually have any bakers, but, you know, as we progress in the game and I get more people, I will be putting those bakers back in for uh, at some point. But um, I just want to make sure 
you know, just well, just test it out. Really, can I can I actually produce more eggs than I than the, the villagers are going to eat? So, I'm going to basically split those two products between them. Um, so yeah, that's going to be milk and eggs. This barn here is going to they'll have three routes to literally share them between all four barns. And the idea is, this one here, for instance, they'll probably then target that barn to get eggs to bring back to that barn. They caravan stable over here they'll target that barn to get milk and bring it back to their barn so it's just this process of you know bringing products into this into the center and then taking products out so they that they exist just to share the resources between the barns. so they'll target these barns and these barns uh, that one there will target these ones and these ones so these ones will be for vegetables probably these ones will be for fruit now these ones here are actually going to be for fish because what I'm thinking of doing is building a big fishing area out here. Um, it'll be a dedicated area. I want the people that work there to live there so I'll give them a hostel to live in. I'll give them their own barn so they can dump all their fish in there so um, they'll be a lot more efficient in you know, transferring the, the, the actual fish around. And then I'll get a, an actual caravan to bring all the fish up and they'll get distributed among these um, these barns here. Now to stop these people then having to trail all the way up to all these different barns themselves to get different types of food and what have you, uh, what I'll do is I'm dedicating these barns here to all the different food types, to, uh, to clothing, to tools and so on and then I'll get somebody to bring all of that produce down to their barns to balance it out for them. So the idea is each quadrant should have all of the resources they need so that the people themselves don't have to actually move and um, they'll all stay within their own little area their own little quadrant and they'll um, be a lot more efficient um, I will have to introduce more barn um, more ca uh, caravan stables by the looks of it because these ones were pretty much going to focus on there so I'll probably have to get somebody else to then balance the fish out here and balance the resources out here. I also need somebody to actually go and get all these different types of resources in these edge barns just so we can then get that um, you know all the different types of food down here because I mean this one right up here this is where we're going to be getting our clothes and our tools for instance we'll have somebody up in village in the actual village itself bringing all those down to here. I'll need some caravans to balance them out I need some caravans to actually bring all the different food types here, so that then somebody can come down here and collect all, the, you know, the, all the different food types from here and take it back to the village. So, uh, as I'm kind of putting it together, I can see I'm going to need a lot more stables as we're going along. But I also need places for people to live. So I've built two hostels, uh, 44 capacity once they're fully built, which I'm pretty sure is more than we need. I've put them in the center. I'd, I would have preferred to have had them closer to where these people actually work, but I also need to treat this as like, like a service area. So, I mean, so far we've got the taverns, but I also want the healer's shop. Now, if I put one of those in the center, the problem is it doesn't cover all areas of the, of the quadrants, for instance. So, I've now got one healer's shop up here, one here, so I've got everywhere covered. If, you, if you've ever seen like a plague take off in this game, it's, it's pretty brutal. Um, it starts off slowly, but it gets really, really quick. So you've really got to nip it in the bud. I mean, I'll only need two people to cover both healer's shops, but it gives me capacity of up to 18 people. I mean, in theory, I shouldn't get one of those issues where it just takes off as long as I've got the, the shops covered. But, you know, for peace of mind, I just want to make sure I've got everything covered because there's going to be like 100 and, I don't know, 125 plus people living in these, you know, all these different quadrants and I need to cover it all off. So, I mean, you do get things like rabies um, from bites, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've had people with pneumonia. So I want to cover all of that potential um, sickness and have these two two healer shops. I also need to be able to get educations for the kids so I've got a school on that side and a school on that side and uh, then obviously we've got our caravan stables there. So the plan is basically it's we're getting into summer so I need to get the roads finished off. Hopefully we'll get that done before the winter. I mean there's not much I can do. People are going to come over from village one anyway. Everything else is paused off. Uh, then when we get into the next year, I'm going to focus on the two, at least one hostel, I should say. 
uh, to begin with because then I can get people into the area who can help with the terraforming but also then start to focus on say like like that stable there that that way I can start bringing the meat and the uh, eggs into these two barns uh, get these this caravan here to then balance them out I'll have this caravan here built we'll have our vegetables brought into that barn there probably they'll balance it out and then um, I'll then have to start looking at how I deal with getting um, the resources balanced all the way through you know from end to end um, we'll just have to see how that goes and you know and I, I'm just gonna like feel my way through it just by placing some stables down and see um, see how that um, how that works basically now apart from this um, work to be done in this um, the village here uh, I have been running into problems with um, people dying of starvation that's a big big problem it's not just people who come over here to work I mean it's just strange little things I mean there's like um, trying to find somebody there's mm -hmm. we've got Helenia here for instance now she's heading over to a house over here she's a laborer so I think at some point she was working over here she might, might have been helping with getting the trees chopped down over there she lives over here she's she's got hungry and she's coming back home the only strange thing is she's heading for a house in village one but if you click on the actual house it's sh it's saying that she lives in this hostel here uh, if I can find her she's somewhere on this list there there she is so she lives in this hostel and yet she's heading to a, an actual house in village one and I think it's like I've probably mentioned on a previous episode where I think at some point the game decided she was hungry gave her an instruction and at that moment in time <clears throat> her house was actually over here somewhere so off she went and started heading there sometime later the game then changed where she lived and it's now over here but at that point it's too late she's already committed to coming over here now sometimes I find you know, they, don't, they just don't make it I mean if somebody's working over here for instance I've seen people doing terraforming for instance they'll get hungry and they'll just keep working and working until they finish that bit that they were going to do and then they'll decide to go home and if they live over here chances are they'll starve by then um, I don't know how far she's going to get I mean I've, I've seen it's, it's pretty cruel I mean sometimes I've seen somebody get right up to the steps there and die it's, it's I mean literally right up to the steps I thought that was that that was just plain cruel that was but um it is quite interesting because sometimes what you'll see is they'll, they'll come into the village uh, they'll go in the house and they'll get something to eat and the little icon above their head disappears but the next action they've got is to actually go and eat something else now that's no longer their home so they'll actually then start wandering all the way back to the village too so it's, it's totally inefficient because you've obviously then got you know the wandering backwards and forwards between the villages and I don't know if I've got much control over that to be honest so I, I will lose people to that I had issues where I had like a farmer for instance at one point they were walking down this this past this wall now and they actually live uh, the, the, they lived in the hostel here they worked in the farm we were in season so to me I thought well why aren't they actually working in the farm but they had like an instruction which was I think it was carry resource to storage or something so I actually followed them and uh, they went all the way over to village uh, one uh, they came all the way over to this tower and they actually picked up uh, some meat so the the tower I mean it's, it's armed so they must have it must have killed an animal that walked into its way and um, it killed that and it, that left some like food lying around here so they then picked it up and put it into the barn and they went all the way back to the village too I mean that was nuts because if they'd been starving at any point of that process chances are they'd have probably gone all the way to village one and starved at some point so that's another thing that I, I seem to run into um, the, the biggest problem I've had was teenagers there was a lot of teenagers living over here at one point uh, they were all coming all the way past you know this place here because there's a slight there was a slight dip over here so they could get out this way and they were coming out past here past, down here they were I would see like events where people were dying usually like of hypothermia when that happened but then there was this case where there was like a big massive tidal wave there was tons and tons of teenagers they all just dra uh, died one after the other of starvation and it was just crazy I, for whatever reason they'd, they'd all just suddenly left village two and headed for village one um uh, i mean I, well, I had a look on the events and they were dying in various places like but 
it got me thinking that um, I needed to do something to try and help help them because I, I was losing quite a lot of teenagers anyway and when that happens I mean if you're losing people to old age uh, it's gonna it really slows the you know the growth rate down for your population so I thought what I would do is increase the number of people that could live in these houses because originally I increased the number of people living, living, living in village number two so that way I can get a lot of labourers over there but I didn't want to increase the population so I actually reduced the number of people that could live in these houses to keep the, the population um, at the same level or roughly that level anyway um, and I think that is partly due, uh, well that's partly to blame because then there wouldn't have been enough capacity over here um, for people like teenagers or labourers probably. So what I've now done is I've, in, I've taken those restrictions off so these are all, should be all back up to full capacity now. Uh, actually that's at 5 so we'll take that back up, 12, 12, 11, we'll take that up at 12, 12 and 12. So my theory is that we should now get a lot more teenagers that can live over here. If that's the case, I don't see much of an incentive for them to go over here. Um, I think teenagers can get kicked out. So if I had like a teenager living here and put a labourer was over here, the labourer would want to go and live in village two and the, the teenager would end up being forced to come over to village one. So they'd literally just swap housing. Um, I also want these teenagers to grow up and become adults and be labourers and live in here. Hopefully that might solve that, that issue I had with a farmer because then I'm, I'm assuming that there's a priority for like labourers to pick up you know these goods. Um, just have a bit of a look around. So there's, there's quite a few meat being dropped over there for instance. So I'm assuming if there's plenty of labourers living over here they can go and get that instead of you know like a farmer from village one. Uh, also, if somebody dies in Village 1, I won't get a labourer coming all the way from Village 2 to replace them. Uh, we'll already have a local labourer that, that can take over from them, and vice versa. So I'm hoping that's done something to help. Uh, I was also wondering that, you know, maybe the village, uh, the actual teenagers themselves, maybe they move to get closer to a school, so maybe there's like um, a free place to live over here and there's a school nearby so maybe the teenagers go over there so I've now built a school as well now there's two reasons for that at the time I did actually have a lot of teenagers living here without a school they don't get educated they're not as productive so uh, I built that and I was actually at the point where that school which is the one from village one that was completely full uh, this one was at 17 now since then about two years have passed teenagers have been fine and uh, you can see we don't have that many teenagers over here in village two we do have some what i've, what I've been doing is i've i actually dropped the the number of people that could live here i only wanted 10 um six farmers and four uh, herders but that's outside of the catchment area for the school so what i've done is i've um i, I, I reduced the number of people could, that could live there to the to the maximum that I need and these two these two hostels here have been maxed out um, well yeah they're maxed out now so the idea is that if there are any teenagers living over here then they would have come and lived in these two hostels and uh, now I, I've since paused off the farm because I ran into a problem with the uh, with hay there was a lot of hay getting uh, created here and I, I got um, sidetracked I just keep an eye on that amount there there wasn't enough hay getting produced in village one so a lot of um, actual uh, cows and sheep died uh, of starvation I quickly bought some hay on the on the market and that um, kind of fixed the problem but uh, I think to be honest I need to reduce this I only need enough for, for four people at the moment so let's take this down to four uh, hopefully that will sort things out because I, I mean the population's already going up we're up to 324 possibly uh, there's 299 though so I've, that's not going to cause an issue there's plenty of capacity for people to grow uh, you know to grow up and become adults and more babies to be born and so on so yeah I mean there's a uh, there's all these starvation that goes on and at the moment I'm just kind of putting up with it you know the population goes up 
then it suddenly takes a dive and goes back up again. But I mean, there is one potential way around it, and that there is a mod in uh, that's available. I've subscribed to it. It's called Kitchen and Cooking, but I haven't actually enabled it. Uh, the idea is you can enable that mod, and it gives you an option to build what's called an eatery. Um, it's kind of like a little takeaway, if you will. So the idea is that at the moment, a villager, if they want something to eat, they'll only go to their actual home. It's the only place they'll go to eat. I mean, they can go like to a bar and pick up some like um, some fruit, for instance, but they won't eat it. They'll, they'll, they'll have to take it back to their house, and then they'll eat it. Um, it's very, very strict in that sense. So if you want to eat, you've got to have a place to live. If you want to get warm, you've got to have a place to live. What this eatery does is it gives you another building for people to actually go to to get something to eat. So if I introduced like an eatery into this little mid section here, um, if somebody was in village number two, uh, number two and they start heading back to village one and they're hungry, they can actually stop off here and get something to eat. They don't have to actually go all the way home. The, the eatery is actually closer than their home and they'll go there instead. Uh, there's another option within that mod where you can actually get food served from the tavern. I think I'll actually go that way because that gives me a kind of like a, an old-fashioned inn where you know you've got like a, a stop-off point between the two villages where people could stop off to get a drink uh, and get something to eat as well. Now I don't want to introduce that yet because I want to see how far I can get, you know, being able to build village two without it. But I think I will introduce it later in the game. Partly as a cosmetic, because I quite like this idea of an inn, but also because I'm going to flatten Village 1 and I'm going to rebuild it as Village 3. Uh, I'm going to pick up basically what I've learned building all this lot in Village 2, um, apply that to Village 1, but I want to see uh, like a comparison. What's it like when you've got the mod actually enabled? So we'll have Village 2 without it, Village 1 with it. I do expect it to do you know, wonders, to be honest, because I'm losing so many people to starvation, going backwards and forwards between the villages, and the villages so far apart. I think it should stop most of those. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, I, I just need like a baseline, if you will, so I can compare you know, with, with the mod and without the mod, basically. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video off there so that I can focus on getting this lot started. Uh, we're not going to actually build anything, as I say, until we get literally into you know the next season, really, because it's better to start them, you know, once the winter's passed. So I'm just going to pause the video there, and then once we've made some progress, I'll bring you back. Well, we've now got all of the buildings up and running that I needed to uh, to create to get the. The actual uh, food transport's done. Uh, so we've got three barns here in the centre. Uh, I'll just control the camera. Uh, so yeah, we've got the three barns there in the centre. And down here in this quadrant, we've got a barn for the, the vegetable quadrant. And I've also built two caravan stables. So now that that's done, I've been able to set up my routes. So for instance, we've got meat and milk coming out of this barn. The meat goes to here, uh, the milk goes to there. Any vegetables that are in that uh, barn will be brought to here. Any eggs that are in that barn will be brought to here. Now, technically, I actually don't have any eggs. Um, to be fair, I don't have any ground, and I definitely don't have any chicken coops. But I've, I've put the route in there just so I don't actually forget it. Because uh, I know if I don't do it now, later down the, uh, the line when I get this all done, I'll, I'll just forget about the actual eggs. And I'll start scratching my head wondering why people aren't getting any. So, so far so good. It seems to be doing all well. Oh, okay. We've got um, meats and we've got eggs coming into the centre, but we just don't have any vegetables. The reason for that is because that, that barn's empty and it's going to stay empty for quite a while. Uh, the actual farmers, they're working over here. So the vegetables, uh, they're stuck in this area. So until I get that barn built and that stable built, it's going to stay like that. So that's going to be the next focus. I'll get that barn there built, then that one. Uh, then we'll turn to the stables. And that, that gets that bit um, sorted out. I'll be able to then put the roots in and we'll start to see the, you know, the vegetables literally starting to get exchanged between all four barns. But uh, it's probably going to take me a while, so I figure uh, what I can do is I can literally just get the farmers to move over to this field. Um, I'll wait until they're finished with that one, pause it off, 
unpause this one. Um, it's already built, it just needs the you know the workers assigned to it. Then they'll uh, next year they'll start working this fields, grow their, their potatoes, and then when we get to the, the harvest period of next year, the vegetables will start going into that barn anyway. I mean, it doesn't really matter, you know, if you've got people living here, if they're coming to this barn, you know, so yeah, I'm not too fussed. So, that's another way to fix that one. But ultimately, we will end up where we've got, um, you know, food getting exchanged between these barns, which was the original plan. Now, um, I did run into another hiccup, and I've, I've fixed that already. Uh, these herdsmen, for instance, they were actually bringing milk to this barn. Um, yeah, they were bringing the milk to this barn instead of this barn. And I think it's just uh, some mechanic within the game. I, I do see it with uh, the fish farmers, and I've now noticed it here as well. And I, I think what happens is, I mean, let's say I've got like a herdsman who um, uh, is standing here at the time they get an instruction to take milk to storage. What happens is they see that as the nearest barn. So they literally walk all the way up here, totally ignore the fact that there's a barn there that could have gone to, and bring the milk here. And I don't want that happening. I mean, for one thing, it's inefficient. I mean, that's just crazy, that not going to that barn. But also, I want to be able to control what goes in and out of the actual quadrants themselves, because that was the original plan. So what I've done is, I mean, well, what I could do, I mean, I could, um, I could have, like, taken the fences away with a mod, and they would have just gone direct there. But it's, uh, yeah, I'd rather have these, these barns dedicated to what gets produced within that quadrant and then I control what goes in and out of the quadrant with the, with the caravan stable. So I've already got an, a mod in, uh, installed which allows me to filter certain goods out and what I've done is I've just filtered everything. And basically that's just blocked this barn out from these villages. It doesn't affect the caravans, it just affects the herdsmen for instance. They can't take anything into that barn so now they've got no choice but to go there. Uh, and that's exactly the way I want it. So that's fixed now. Um, I've done this, something similar to this barn here. I've, I've blocked out vegetables because I don't want this farm bringing vegetables to here. Uh, the concern is I'll end up with a big like um, backlog of vegetables if you will. We'll start to see more and more vegetables coming into this barn and then nobody will touch it until at some point you know maybe we might start getting a shortage of vegetables in here. I won't notice it um, but people will be walking all the way down to this barn so I want to avoid that. So, yeah, that's now blocked out for vegetables, so everything will come into these barns here. So, once all these buildings are built, all the routing should start working as intended. And that's pretty much it for this, um, you know, for getting food exchanged between the two quadrants. The only concern, though, is we seem to be running out of vegetables. Um, I can think of a couple of reasons. One is the population's going up. Uh, we're up to 309 of a potential 333, so we're probably consuming more vegetables than the you know, than we're actually supplying. I mean, that's one thought. I mean, we've got more fruit coming through now. I think we were down to about 20,000 before, but since I've enabled that orchard again, it's now coming up to 28,000, so that's better. But the vegetables, yeah, we're stuck at about 10,000. We're near the end of the season, yet we've only got about 10,000 um, in stock. Um, so. I was having a look around the barns because I remember at a time when this all started I had about 4,000 vegetables because I was actually selling vegetables off for uh, for fish and I'm not doing that now but there's, there's like 22 vegetables in that barn, there are 2 vegetables in that barn, there are 199 vegetables in that barn um, and yet we're almost at the end of the season so I, I definitely need to make more vegetables so I think as well as moving these farmers from here to here Next season I'll enable this uh, field here. We'll bring an extra four people on um, to be farmers. And then it's a case of we'll be producing more vegetables. So we should then start to see this going back up again, hopefully. But another reason is we're not producing, or at least I'm not buying enough fish. Uh, before I started building all these, I was basically selling uh, meat off in the market for fish. Um, but I can't do that all the time now. I can't keep that up anymore because we've got uh, we've got resources to buy. I'm trading meat for things like um, logs, stone, and so on. So there's sometimes these people don't actually get the uh, the actual fish they need, and they do need a variety because I've seen it before where I've had lots of stocks, you know, plenty of fish, meat, fruit, and vegetables, 
but then the, the fish started to go down and then that took a bit of a hit on things like the meat the fruit and the vegetables so I think that's another factor so I need to get back to producing more fish and the only way I can see it doing that at the moment is to have more meat I do bring, bring I do bring plenty of meat in from village one but I'm selling it off at such a rate that the caravanners can't actually cope with the demand they can only transport a certain amount at a time and if I'm, and I'm, if I've got like a gap in the thousands it's gonna take them ages to get that meat all the way over here so I think what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring this uh, pasture on online. It just needs a bit more work to, to get it built and then we'll have more meat getting produced. I'll have to increase the number of people in this hostel obviously. As soon as that uh, cow pops up we'll transfer half the herd over. And then it's just a matter of keeping an eye on the hay because we've... I mean this field here that produces hay is paused off. Uh, we've got about 2,000 hay there. Uh, 2,000 hay there so at the moment we're okay but um, at some point I'm gonna have to bring these farmers back as well so yeah I mean we're, we're doing okay there's a bit of fixes I need to do to, to get it sorted out so I'm gonna get cracking on with that and then once I'm ready I'll bring you back well we've now got our barns built uh, we've got our stables built as well so it means we're now doing the full transportation of uh, produce that we're making so anything in that barn will be taken to that one, anything from there will be taken to that one. And it's all, you know, shared out as well. But um, I've got other problems now, it's a, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I think during the first year I lost a lot of people to starvation, and I mean a lot. I mean, we're not doing too bad, we're up to like 316 out of, I think it was 309. But obviously I've, I've lost a lot of labourers, I'm down to only 16 labourers. Uh, I've, I've obviously had to put a lot of people into things like you know the, the pastures here, the farms here, um, because we're we're hitting such a, a low on vegetables. I've got both of these farms now active as well. I mean, it's been at the point where I've I've had to actually start selling a lot of things off in the market here uh, for vegetables just to be able to you know stay in the positive uh, numbers. Basically, it was just getting that bad. So hopefully now that these two are up, we'll start to see the numbers start to go up but we're just not producing enough in this area here there's just not enough vegetables I mean I'll I'll see how it goes again this year uh, we had a late starting winter but then uh, we had a bit of a problem it took a while before we got through into the spring of the next year uh, this year hasn't been too bad I think we're into the spring and we're literally starting now so we'll see how we do for vegetables on this side, but at the moment we're just not producing enough to get out into the centre. And we're not producing enough meat either. I've, I've actually reduced the limit for meats coming out of here uh, for that reason, to see if we can get more meat into the centre and then down to here. Another concern I've got is, is the actual uh, clothes, because we've got about, I think we've, we've only got a certain amount in this area here. Uh, they're not they're just not producing enough to, to keep up I think part of it's because these barns are just so full uh, they're getting clogged up with by wool so I've, I've actually paused this um, this pasture off I mean the sheep will die off uh, unfortunately uh, but it's just a case of I just I've got to do something to get the yeah uh, the wool count down I'm gonna start culling the sheep as well in that farm uh, I've got a caravaner over here they've basically caused almost everything off except the, uh, the actual wool that we get from the sheep to, to get all of this wool out of this barn here so we can free up some room and then I'll have to get another caravan and start pulling it out of here uh, hello what up there uh, so I think I'm gonna get them so they take that to Ah right, so they're sharing the wool between these two barns, so well, that's okay, so they're taking any wool from here and bringing it over to there, so as long as the caravaner keeps pulling it out, we'll be fine then. Uh, hopefully it'll free up some room and then the tailors can start producing more actual clothes. The only other problem is that the tailors they just weren't getting enough hide. Now in part that's because I was actually pausing some of the caravan routes here off, so these were they had uh, little roots in place to you know share the firewood and get all the, the actual hide out of here to bring it over to the, the center there uh, they weren't bringing the clothes in from there either because that was on pause 
And the reason for that was I was focusing on getting everything out of this market as quickly as possible into the warehouse so we could get the buildings built. So now that that's done, I've unpaused those and hopefully we'll start to see things balance out again a bit. But I've noticed there's quite a bit of hide here. Uh, quite a bit up there as well. So I've added some roots in to that uh, stable there and that one there to get them to bring all of that hide down to here. I mean, up to now, I've just been buying it in the market to, to compensate for the lack of hide in the actual, in the village there. So hopefully we'll see quite a bit of hide coming down here and then it'll get transported to there. They'll bring it to here. Uh, and then they'll bring it actually to this barn here. So hopefully that'll fix that problem. And I won't have to keep buying so much. I'm just having a bit of a look around to see where all this hide is. got puzzled where, where all the hides got to because there's there's plenty of it around somewhere I just don't know where but anyway uh, yeah I'm gonna have to start culling the air uh, the sheep down here I'm not gonna do that yet but um, one other thing is I mean obviously I've been losing people to starvation to hypothermia it's quite frustrating there was a teenager who actually left that school and they started coming up here then they died of hypothermia before they could reach their house so I think what I want to do is focus on that school there. I mean, we haven't been doing too bad for for meat, so I've been able to, you know, sell quite a bit for fish over in this area now that these buildings are done. But I really want to get this school here up and running. Uh, then these uh, kids won't have so far to, to go during the winter. And likewise, I want to get that healer shop. I mean, I've got somebody down here. I think they've got they've got rabies. But I need to be able to cover that uh, hostel up there, especially now that I've got more people. So, uh, actually, I don't want that hostel there. Uh, I don't want that healer shop there. I want that one. But it's it's all the resources that I need to do it. Uh, until I've got enough meat, I can't really buy these things. And that school needs upgrading. Once it's built, it'll need upgrading. But I'm I'm really keen to get it there. Um, and hopefully they, we'll get the teenagers lasting a lot longer. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this to see how things go, see if our uh, food balances out, uh, see how we go for the clothing as well, and then get these two buildings done. So that's the, the school there uh, and the healer shop there. So I'm just going to park it there and then I'll be back once we're ready. Well, I think we're actually at the point now where I'm, I'm running out of real estate here in terms of like the screen. I'm, I'm running out of places to keep an eye on things. I've got that many little windows open while I, I focus on what's going on. I mean, I, I may as well just shut those down now. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on that one because of the sheep. I'm, we've just got way too much wool. We've got like 38,000 wool. It's getting crazy. So I'm just watching these barns here so that I can, you know, make sure that we start getting rid of it all. Uh, I'm trying to remember what these, these are the two barns here, uh, caravan stables here rather, so I'll, I'm not too fussed about the schools anymore, but I mean we're up to like 13 of 20 teenagers here, because we've got like the healer shop built and um, we've got our school over here built, I mean that's, it's been built and then upgraded, so there's obviously like a lot of teenagers over here at the, mo uh, at the moment. I'm keeping that window there open because at some point I'll, I might bring it back again to that, that particular pasture. I just want to know what things I've shut down so that I can bring them back. Um, but I'd say that's pretty much it for Village 2 so far. I mean, I, I could start building these barns in readiness for, for down here. Because obviously I'd want to build those three there, uh, those six there, those four, uh, those four there. And then we'll start to see, you know, produce getting sent over here once we get all the terraforming and the buildings built um, and then we'll start to get uh, fruit brought brought over to here as well but that's a good way off the main focus really is the terraforming um, and the, the other problem is of course is the, is the population it's well, it practically nosedived we've got less than 300 um, like people overall now and that's just basically because it was just taking so long I mean I just wasn't see, seeing enough meat coming through so I had a bit of a look around and there was like plenty of stone, plenty of iron, so I thought I'll take a bit of a gamble. I took a gamble and the population took a fall. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, but at least we got it all done. I mean, that's the good point. I mean, it, it took quite a lot of resources to get those two buildings 
build, but it's out of the way now, and I can I can focus my time on this uh, terraforming. I'll just do that offline. Uh, basically, it's just going to be labourers, so it's going to be down to however many labourers I can get over here and uh, do the work. But I mean, I've, I've already had to cut back on the you know like the fish farming that was going on over there in village one, which I'm not too fussed because I can I can sell things off in village number one, just trade it in for meat uh, for fish rather sell the, the meat over here off uh, uh, for actual fish as well so it's not really bothering me at the moment um, what is bothering me is that there's not that much meat actually getting produced in here and it's the same goes for the actual vegetables I mean we've got two two pastures two fields and it's just, just not enough to cover this this amount of people as we've got I mean we're gonna like double the population over here at some point because you've got two quadrants over here to build and yet we're just not producing enough now I'm going to hedge my bets, it's because we don't have enough fruit coming in. Once that takes off, then hopefully everybody will um, start jumping up and down with glee because they'll be getting plenty of, of the different types of food and then we'll start to see up, uh, these other ones starting to go up. But uh, yeah, that, that remains to be seen. Um, so what I'm just going to do then is I'm just going to just carry on with this terraforming. I'll do that off camera. Uh, the population should slowly start to recover. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the vegetables though, because that's what I'm, I'm particularly bothered about. I mean, we've got we've now got plenty of uh, vegetable farms up and running in in uh, village one, so it should start to come back. But um, I've got plenty of roots, sift, you know, shifting things around. So so far so good, I'd say. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed watching it. If so, then do please leave a like because that'll help you out a great deal. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yeah, do please subscribe. Just remember to click the little bell icon though because then you'll get notifications when I send new content out. And if you've got any comments, any suggestions, want to leave any feedback at all, please post that in the comment section below. Until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Bye!